Welcome back to our Scratch 3.0 series. In the last video, we went over the basics of the new Scratch 3.0. In this video, we'll learn how to make a simple two-player game. Today we're going to make a two-player game that's somewhat similar to Agario. To keep the theme similar, we'll make a new backdrop by clicking the backdrop over here and making a new costume under backdrops. Uh, I'm going to fill it using uh, this gradient and I'm going to choose colors here and uh, maybe a bit more of a blue, I might swap those uh, and my green I think I'll make a bit darker. So yeah, I've got a bit more contrast in my colors. All right, now if I click somewhere in the center, that should make it a roughly circular um, pattern. As long as I'm using the gradient tool, um, I will need to convert to a bitmap to do this though, because vectors don't like it in Scratch. So we'll click here, add that, and now I'm going to go back to a vector because I like working with the vectors um, over bitmaps for Scratch. Now that I've got my backdrop, I'm gonna delete my cat because I don't need the Scratch cat anymore. What I'm actually going to do here is add in just a simple sprite, which is the ball. My ball is going to be my player one, so I'm going to rename it right now. And we'll make up our player two later on as we move along. First things first, we need some controls for player one. So we're going to add in some control, uh, actually an event first, uh, and some controls. So a when flag is clicked and forever, and then if something happens. So if I press the key, I wanna move in a certain direction. And the way I'm gonna do that is by using sensing. When a key is pressed, and in our case, that's going to be the up arrow. When the up arrow is pressed, I want to move in a certain direction, and I'm going to change my Y by 10. So Y is up and down, X is left and right, and 10 is up. So now I'm going to duplicate that change this to a down arrow, and I'm going to change that to a negative 10. Duplicate the pair of them by clicking on the top one and duplicating. Um, and then instead of a up arrow, I'm going to add a right arrow and a left arrow. Get rid of these change Y's because now we're dealing with X's for left and right. Uh, and we're going to change Y by 10, and here left is negative 10. So now we should have the code if I run this to move my ball or my player one around the map, around this backdrop here, which it is. Having done that, we can now move on to our food. Um, so similar to Agario, we're going to have something to eat. So we're going to add a sprite and that sprite will be button one. And because it doesn't really look like much food, much like food at the moment, we're going to change costumes. Um, but what we're going to do here, because we're working in a vector, I'm going to click on the little cursor, highlight this shape, right click it. Actually here I can just do um, copy. So I'm going to copy it and paste it. And now you see I've got a, another copy of that on top. I can move that around. I'm going to shrink that down a little bit and add it to the top. Maybe I'll shrink it a little bit more. Now I'm going to copy this smaller one and paste it. I'm going to add one to the bottom, another one to the side, and we'll just add a few more to make it look like we've got uh, something that looks kind of similar to some little food that a little algae type thing might eat. All right, so there we go. We've got our little food sprite. It's a little bit bigger than our um, player one. So what we're going to do here is shrink it down to 20%. And now you can see here, we've got a nice little food um, icon. And we'll change the name of this now to, to food. So now we need to make some code for it. And the code for this is going to be that it's gonna randomly spawn around the map. So we're going to add another event when the flag is clicked and then some forever stuff here. So forever. Um, we want our food 
to go to a random location. So motion, go to random position. You can change this so it goes to cursor or player one. We'll just go to a random position. And then what we're going to do is uh, make a little weight on there. So we're going to go to weight here and we're gonna make that a random weight. So it's going to respawn randomly. And we do that randomly or random weights by adding an operation and that operation is pick random. So we'll add that in there where the one is. And instead of a one, we'll change it to a three, um, to let's say five. So between three and five seconds, it'll respawn. So let's hit the flag and just test that that runs. It's waiting at three to five, then it moves, waiting three to five again. It'll move, there we go. All right, so now we've got our little sprite that is moving around on its own. Now we need some interaction when our player one hits the food, right? We want the player one to eat the food, really, don't we? So what we're going to do is add in a couple of variables. Now these variables are going to be our player one score. And we're going to add in a player two score as well while we're here. Player two, okay. So we've got a player one and a player two score. When our sprite, the food sprite, touches one of our players, we want it to basically disappear, right? And add a score to that player. So we'll put the player scores in the left and right corner. Player one will be on our right side and player two on our left. So we'll put the two names in the right spots. We've got our food here now and our player one. So we're going to add in another event because we need another forever loop. And in this forever loop, if our food touches player one, so sensing, if touching, and here we're going to choose player one, we want, firstly, we want our um, food to hide, and then we want it to, under variables, change our player one by one. And then we'll need to do something similar for player two, but first let's just think this through, right? So now in here, if this player one touches our food, it's going to hide, right? So the food will hide. But we've got no code here anywhere to make the food reshow itself. So what we'll do is add in a show here. Let's add it in the middle. So it'll go to a random position and show, and then wait three to five seconds, and then it'll uh, go to a random position again, which is what we want. So now that we've got this almost sorted, we need to right click our player one and duplicate it. So now we've got player two, we'll move the food to the end. So now we've got player one, player two, and food. We'll go back to uh, our food, duplicate this if statement, add it to the bottom so now instead of touching player one though we'll add player two and instead of changing player two we'll change player or change player one we'll change player two so now we've got a full set of code that will increase the scores invariably but we don't have anything to set the scores to zero at the start of the game we could do that here uh, but because we're going to end up duplicating our food uh, that'll just make a bunch of code that'll be uh, a bit of a waste so if we go back to our player we're going to add some uh, information here a bit later so we'll add for now just an event when this is clicked we're going to set our variables to zero so because he's player one we'll do that and then we'll drag this into our player two and we'll change player two to zero here so now I'll hit my flag and I can move these around. Now you'll notice both of my sprites are moving together and that's because I haven't yet changed uh, the code for this sprite. So let's do that now. I need to add some change or make some changes here that change the arrows basically. So instead of using the up arrow, I'm going to use the W key. Instead of the down arrow, I'm going to use the S key. 
instead of the right arrow, I'm going to use the D key. And instead of my left arrow, I'm going to use my A key. WASD is a pretty uh, common use um, for moving around in video games. So if you've played a few video games on a computer, you might have seen that before. So at this point now we've got two sprites that can move independently and I'll quickly show you that. They can move on their own, doing their own thing with two different sets of controls. I can't really control both of them simultaneously. Um, but there we've got a proof of concept and our player one score has gone up a little bit. So we've got that. All right, so the game's starting to take shape. So at this point, let's step things up a little bit um, so that we'll make our players get a little bit bigger as they eat things. All right, so we could make this continuous and that'll be a challenge for you to do. But for now, I'm going to just make it a simple step. All right, so I'm going to add a forever and an if statement. And basically what I'm going to do is if my score for one of the players, so in this case, I'm editing player two. So if the score for player two uh, is less than a certain value. So if player two is less than, and we'll call it five instead of 50, because five's you know, pretty reasonable. If our variable of player, or not player one, player two, is less than five, we want our player two to look like it is, does now. So we'll go to looks, we'll set size to 100% and we'll change it to outfit or costume, sorry, ball A. And we're gonna duplicate that, chuck this down the bottom and make a few changes here. So instead of having a greater than, we're going to add another operator. So instead of our less than, we're going to add a greater than. So if our player two is greater than, and we're gonna have it greater than four, which is five and above, then we wanna set the size to 150, and we wanna change it to ball B. Now we've got a bit of difference there. The last thing we're going to do here is add in a wing condition. So we're gonna duplicate this again, and put it there. So now if a score is greater than, let's say 19, so if the score is 20 or greater, then we're going to not change the size or anything. What we're going to do is add in a new look and that new look will be to say something for a couple of seconds. Let's say winner for a couple of seconds. And then under our, our controls, we're going to stop all. So then what we've got here now is we're going to set the player's score to zero. And then if the player's score is less than five, make it look like it does now. If the player's score is greater than four, so it's five or above, it'll move up to a bigger size and a different color. And then finally, if the player's score is greater than 19, which is 20 or above, it'll say winner for two seconds and end the game. Now we've got to move that across to our other player. So we're going to duplicate that little chain and we'll drag it into player one, which will make a copy. We don't need the whole thing, so there's no point carrying it all over. There we go, and we can put that there. What we need to do is make it so that um, our players both start in the right spot and then we can just add some more food in and then we're done. So what we'll do is Drag these to roughly the right positions. Player two and player one, just so we know where they need to be roughly. And we can see here that we're at 208,0. So let's change that to 210,0. And then for player two, we're at negative, so we're going to make it negative 210, oops, 210, comma zero, at the start of the game, there we go. So they're both starting at equal spots. Our food's waiting a few seconds. Let's duplicate this food a few times. And we'll start there. There we go, so let's now test and see if we can get up to 19.
And one thing you'll notice here is my player one hasn't moved up to the next color. So we'll need to fix that bug really quickly. And it also hasn't ended the score. The reason for that is if I go to my player two, you can see here, actually my player one, sorry. If I go to my player one, you'll see here that all of these refer to player two. So we need to pull these out and change them to player one. So let's throw these away and get our player ones. We're in our code, there we go. So now if I collect all of these, if I get up to five, there we go. Now I'm bigger. So there we go, we've got a two player game. Uh, hopefully now you can customize it a little bit and make it your own. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell button to get notifications. And if you're a teacher, check out the links in the description for worksheets and lesson plans that go along with this video.